Hi everyone. So I am really, really excited for Cells at Work Code Black. So I was a huge fan of the first season to the point where I actually cosplayed the red blood cell character, I think it was about two years ago. So then when I heard about Code Black, I was super excited about it. Uh, and the reason why is because I am a registered nurse. Um, I'm a registered nurse of about 10 years. I've spent the past six years working in the realm of critical care, cardiology, those sorts of areas. So my patients generally come to me very sick and usually their baseline health is not the greatest. Most of them are smokers, most of them are drinkers, uh, some of them do hard drugs, uh, a lot of them are obese or overweight. Uh, so yeah, so the host body in Code Black sounds a lot like the patients that I would typically see. Um, and there are different considerations that you need to take uh, when you look at somebody who is under chronic stress, maybe has some substance, substance use issues. And uh, yeah, so I'm really interested to see what it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have been out of nursing school for a very, very long time. Um, so I have forgotten a lot of things, including my cellular <laughs> biology. So, I always have this if I need it. Um, this is my pathophysiology textbook with uh, Seibolt on here um, that I will keep handy as a reference guide just in case I need it. Also, credit where credit is due. Um, thank you so much to Dr. Hope of Dr. Hope Sick Notes. Uh, he's like the OG cells at work uh, reviewer. Um, Dr. Hope, if you are watching this by any chance, probably not. Um, huge shout out to you. I love you. Keep up the good work. Can't wait to see what you do with cells at work code black as well. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so we're already starting off uh, not so great, uh, kind of bleak. So it looks like the body is just uh, constantly in a form of stress because uh, he says he works, he works, he works, uh, and it just never really gets him anywhere. So the title is Smoking, Bacteria, and the Beginning of the End. Great way to start 2021. <laughs> Man, this always reminds me of those warning stories of like sketchy uh, workplace recruitment uh, people, I guess, where, you know, they say, oh yeah, like there's no overtime. There's like, we want to focus on, you know, our workers' quality of life. And it, it just never ends up being that way. You're always stressed. You're always working overtime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, it's just like reeks of insincerity. これから何するんですか仕事に決まってんだろ。酸素を運べ。もう仕事いや、俺ら研修って聞いて。研修なんかしてる暇ねえ。働きながら覚えろ。この体には人手も時間も足りてない。急げ。え、働き方を怪しく
to them, which probably indicates some sort of atherosclerosis, uh, maybe, or at least some sort of damage done to the inner lining of the vessel, um, which is usually a result of basically not looking after yourself. <laughs> So this is actually true. When the body is in any condition where the organs may not be adequately perfused uh, with oxygen, where that's be whereas that's because low blood pressure, low oxygenation, whatever the cause, the body will automatically um, divert a lot of its resources to the main organ. So for example, the brain, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, um, and a lot of the extremities will start to be shut down. Uh, you can see this in various forms of shock. Um, if you ever see somebody who is in any form of shock really, whether that's like cardiogenic shock, septic shock, um, hypovolemic shock, um, you will notice that after a certain amount of, a certain point, uh, their fingers and their feet go very cold, very pale, and that's because everything is just shutting down peripherally and then it slowly makes his way upwards until the vital organs are affected as well. ごめんなさいね。近々新鮮な酸素を大量供給できるので、その時は優先的に。本当かい？奥様にだけ特別ですよ。では失礼します。行くぞ、新理。なんだこれは？血管が凸凹じゃねえか。しまい、足元に気を
So interesting thing about carbon monoxide, they do kind of delve into it a little bit, but their explanation isn't great. So basically carbon monoxide is a is a form of gas um, that when you inhale, it can be absolutely toxic. Uh, so that's why every house should really have a carbon monoxide detector uh, installed. Um, so basically how it works is like, yes, as I said, um, the main component of a red blood cell is hemoglobin. So hemoglobin normally binds to oxygen molecules. And then as you see, the oxygen is delivered to all sorts, all parts of the body. The thing is, when carbon monoxide is introduced, hemoglobin will preferentially bind with the carbon monoxide over the oxygen mo molecules. So that ends up being dangerous because obviously your body can't use carbon monoxide um, and the cells will just like be holding this useless carbon monoxide molecule instead of oxygen. And as a result, your body cells just don't get the oxygen that they need. And as a result, they end up dying. <laughs> and if you notice on the side, there's a little red monitor on the side that actually looks very much like some of the monitors that we use at work. Uh, you can see at the top there, there's an ECG, um, there's an ECG tracing. And the rest look like something to do with the respiratory system, maybe. Hard to say. Hard to say without the numbers, but definitely it looks very much like the tracings that we use at work. この体は何でそんなものをわざわざ摂取するんですか一時的な快感を得られる効果もあるからなそれに加えて二個チンにはそれは so yes, smoking. It is, uh, it is probably one of the worst things you can do to your body. Um, it just does so much harm to everything. Um, as you can see, this is depicted in the lungs. It's just a bunch of gunk. Um, probably, I imagine that's the tar from the uh, cigarette. Uh, from the cigarette smoke. Um, so obviously it affects the lungs. It can cause chronic lung diseases like uh, COPD, uh, emphysema, um, as well as lung cancer. It's actually linked to quite a number of cancers, not even just lung cancer, but it can affect pretty well everything. Um, the other one too is it can cause um, really bad heart disease. I would say the vast majority of my cardiac patients smoke. It's very, very rare I get a cardiac patient who does not smoke. Uh, so yeah. Uh, another thing too, it can cause strokes because again, it, it just irreparably harms the blood vessels. Um, so yeah, they've also been linked with strokes. Um, so yeah, and on top of all of that, cigarettes are so expensive. I don't know what it's like where you guys live, but I think where I live, it's like 30 bucks for a pack of cigarettes. And I would say most of the people I talk to go through anywhere from half a pack to two packs a day. I've even come across people who smoke like three or four packs a day. So that's like how much money every single day to put toxins into your body and to basically slowly kill yourself. You, The way I describe it is if you smoke and you buy cigarettes, you are paying this big company, these big CEOs uh, to basically kill yourself. So please don't do it. Don't smoke. And as they said, um, this person here apparently quit smoking for 10 years and only recently restarted. And they made him... <laughs> And they made a mention of, oh, you know, we had just started to uh, really get caught up with the cleaning or something like that. And he has a point. Um, studies have shown that the sooner you quit smoking, the quicker your body will start to recover and your chances of getting some sort of catastrophic um, medical condition like a heart attack or a stroke or cancer go down um, for every week or month that you do not smoke. So even if you do smoke, please try to quit. Um, trust me, you or your body will thank you for it. Um, and it really just improves your chances of living a healthier lifestyle. So don't think that, oh, you know, I've been smoking for, you know, so many years 
um, what's the point of quitting now? I'm telling you right now that there is a point. Your body can recover somewhat from it. Uh, and the sooner you quit, the better. So that concludes our episode for this week. So that was a fantastic first episode. I really loved it. Uh, but again, a lot of this has to do with the fact that um, it's very relevant to my patient population. The vast majority of my patients smoke. Um, and yeah, so it's very interesting to see it animated. Um, uh, yeah. So it looks like next week we'll be looking at alcohol intake and the liver, which is another thing I see a lot of. So I'm really interested to see what they do with it. Uh, hopefully I can release videos on a relatively timely basis. Just kind of depends how things go at work. We'll see. Maybe next week I'll pour myself a glass of wine instead of uh, my green tea latte uh, just to celebrate. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please, please leave them down below. And uh, if not, I shall see you guys next time. Bye! So a few more notes about uh, smoking and vascular disease, courtesy of my pathophysiology textbook. Uh, studies indicate that 20% of the annual mortality from coronary artery disease is traceable to cigarette smoking. Nicotine stimulates the release of catecholamines, such as epinephrine or norepinephrine, uh, which increase heart rate and peripheral vascular constriction. Um, and we did see that in that control room scene um, where they were talking about um, increased heart rate and increase in blood pressure. So vasoconstriction will cause a narrowing of your blood vessels, which, uh, which as a result increases your blood pressure. Uh, as a result, blood pressure increases as do cardiac workload and oxygen demand. Uh, elevated catecholamines also stimulate release of free fatty acids. Uh, cigarette smoking is associated with an increase in LDL, which is the uh, low density lipoprotein, which is the bad type of cholesterol, as well as a decrease in HDL or the high density lipoprotein, which is the good stuff. Um, it also induces a prothrombotic state um, that basically means um, a propensity to creating blood clots, thromb thrombotic coming from thrombus, which means a clot, uh, as well as increases inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein and fibrinogen. So basically every time you smoke uh, increases inflammation in your body, which is temporarily um, a part of your immune system and is not necessarily a bad thing for the short term, but over time and chronically, this sort of inflammation is ultimately bad for the body. Uh, further, the carbon monoxide in cigarette smoke reduces the oxygen content of arterial blood, which is basically what we saw in this episode. Hypoxemia, which is insufficient oxygen in the arterial blood, may promote atherosclerosis by decreasing the availability of oxygen to the vessel walls and increasing vessel wall permeability. Uh, and as a final note here, the risk of coronary artery disease increases with heavy smoking and decreases when smoking is stopped. After smoking is discontinued, the risks associated with coronary artery disease may decrease by as much as 50% in one year. So like I said, guys, it's never too late to quit. Please work on it if you do smoke and if you do not smoke, do not start. <laughs>